this standard represents questions that our students can handle. The data that's in the fossil record is clear and unambiguous. It is the strongest evidence that evolution has occurred. That's the sequential nature of groups in the fossil record. You look at the young rocks and they have simple organisms. As the rocks get older, uh, younger, they have more complex organisms. In 2003, I'll repeat myself, but in 2003 in the biology books adoption, that is where I was convinced that why these wonderful opponents of mine in this debate, why they think they're so correct. It is so reasonable to assume that life in the simple old, old rocks, that simple life, gradually changed to these. That's what convinced Darwin to begin with. He saw the progression, the sequential nature. Professor Kenneth Miller, in his book, uh, Finding Darwin's God, who, who's the author of one of the textbooks and one of the leading defenders of evolution in the United States today, ha has a picture of, that shows the fossil record. And what they have are vertical lines. If you pardon me a minute, since this is kind of surprising me, I want to get and show you that, well, it'll take me too long to find it. <laughs> what you have in the fossil record are two other patterns that do not support evolution. It's the sudden appearance of groups in the fossil record. The Cambrian explosion, 550 million years ago, you have all these phyla that immediately, just all of a sudden, appear. And a phyla is a major distinct group. The phylas are still with us today. Some have uh, flittered out, but some are still here. It's the absolute science. It's data. It's a verifiable. It's objective. I, if I'd have known I'd have to debate this even more today, I would have brought all my evidence. I have the Time Magazine cover. It says, Darwin's Big Bang, or it says, Evolution's Big Bang, or because of the Cambrian explosion, they have the study. It's amazing. It does, the fossil record in that case is the idea of gradual change that must have taken place. It's not supported by the fossil record. It's an insufficiency. We have students in Texas that we want to grow up, to be trained, to love science. We have to be honest with them. To put this standard in allows that honesty to occur. It really does. It's honest. Here is the fossil record. Yes, it supports evolution, but this doesn't support evolution. Secondly, when the groups appear, they stay the same. And it's not Don McLeroy saying this. This is the paleontologist saying it. The quote that I say, people are trying to say I'm speaking out of context about stasis. Stephen Jay Gould, the number one defender, the late Stephen Jay Gould, the number one defender of evolution, the PBS would call on, everybody would call on. Do you know what he did? He said, stasis is data. Say it 10 times before breakfast, every day <laughs> for a week, stasis is data. Data is scientific. The data shows that they stay the same. They draw little dashed lines to connect it. What should we see if evolution was true? Darwin said it's the gravest objection to his theory. Gravest objection. It's still the gravest objection. It is so scientific. It's not complicated. It doesn't take mathematics. I disagree with these experts. Somebody's got to stand up to experts that are just I think, I don't know why they're doing it. They're wonderful people. The fossil record does do it. Why take it out? If evolution is so true and has no weaknesses, I can't see any reason for putting it in there. All it does is give them an extra standard to argue for it. Yes, it's hard to stand up to very brilliant, wonderful people. And the opposition is very nice. They're wonderful people. But frankly, this is an excellent standard. It doesn't take complicated mathematics. 
it takes looking at a chart, what this would accomplish, our textbooks would state there is stasis in the fossil record. The, the, the textbooks would say there's the sudden appearance that this that, that is, does raise problems for the idea of common ancestry. And remember, the great claim of evolution, my two amendments that looks like are going to be taken out unless somebody listens to my impassioned plea, what they do, they argue at the core of evolution, which states, this is scientific, this is scientific, the, the idea that all life is descended from a common ancestor by the unguided natural processes. This applies to the first great claim. You look in the graveyard, what do you see? It's been 150 years since the origin of species and the fossil record still has problems. Yes, it supports it, but yes, it doesn't support it. Let the students do that. We need to be honest with our kids. Thank you. <laughs>